Shalom, Yashallah, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to the Most High Yahweh. I do so in the name of His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Yasharallah. Call Haloyim Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Haraka Kwadash, for blessing our elders with the spirit of truth so that we may know. Shout out to the Akim and the Akwaf that's keeping the faith in the works. Y'all keep at it. This is your brother Abaya coming at you with more precepts. It's the book of Psalms, chapter 58, and verse 3 it says, The wicked are estranged from the womb, they go astray as soon as they be born, speaking lies. All right, Job 9 24 says, The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. He covers the faces of the judges thereof. If not, where and who is he? All right, so the world is being ran by the wicked. So that means that the media that you watch, majority wise on your television, main. Um, you know, station media uh, networks are operated by the wicked. Even, you know, these individuals here, they they are the wicked, right? But the thing of it is, you have the wicked that know they're the wicked, the people that really run this place, right? That that are whose soul. Uh, purpose in life is to be a deceiver, is to be a false accuser, right? Basically a devil. And you have the wicked that don't know they're wicked. They really do believe that they're good. And they really do believe that, you know, the, the, the messed up things they do is, you know, like a cry or a plea for help or something like that. But at the end of the day, it's just wicked, right? Those individuals are against the wicked that strive to be deceivers, right? Hence, what you see today, the split on the earth as it pertains to Esau, right? You got Esau that really do want to take this world back to the so-called good old days and the glory days of you know, when everything was looking up as it pertains to humanity in their eyes. <laughs> all right. But we all know it's always been hell and trash for us from jump to even now and, you know, in the future, too. But the wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they be born speaking lies. Your media that you bank on, uh um, I'm speaking to individuals that who may not all the way be up or they just all the way out, you know what I'm saying, all the way blind. The media that you banking on is not the truth. As we speak, it's so much stuff going on around the world. But if you watch your local news channel and you depend on that to give you information for global events, you have been deceived and you will constantly be deceived until those those entities are no more. Right? For example, the Ukraine Russia issue. How they just pushing is solely Ukraine and solely Russia. And clearly it's not. Clearly that's America's war. Clearly they involved in it. Right? They're providing arms, they're providing soldiers, right? We can stop right there. If if a country or a nation is providing soldiers and arms to another country in war, that means they're in the war. All right? But I digress. This particular video is based off of the protest that's going on around the world, based off of the price hikes of everything. I know a lot of people feel as though, you know, everything's all good right now because your gas prices ain't looking too bad. In fact, they looking like days of old. But just know, they gonna bounce back up. All right? Just understand that, All right? Because the economy right now is unstable. So if the economy is unstable, that means the price of everything is gonna, going to be unstable, All right? I know a lot of people feel as though, well, I've gone to the store and I haven't seen too much of a price hike. Actually, you have, but you just don't recognize it. Because a lot of the packages that you go and buy, they put less goods in the pack 
and charge you the same amount as though it was a package of old. You can look this information up. I ain't making it up. Right? You are paying the same price for less goods. Right? But anywho, I'm going to let this video play and I'll be back. He spoke just last week to a Dutch farmer about the unrealistic emissions of targets that the government has set and how they will decimate the agricultural industry in the Netherlands, which is the world's second largest agricultural exporter. But here's the thing. The reality is this is not an isolated incident. And while the ambitions of the global elites pushing radical environmental and economic agendas has grown in recent years, happily, so too has the pushback. We've seen it in growing protests over the past weeks from farmers across Europe. The overthrow of the Sri Lankan government, which, remember, wanted to turn the whole island into an organic paradise. And this, even as far back as the surprise vote, at least for the elites, in favor of Brexit and for Donald Trump in 2016. Now, this guest, I'm so excited that he's come to join us tonight, Ralph Schulhammer, is an assistant professor in economics and political science at Webster University in Vienna, and he has written a fantastic piece on the working class revolt, and he joins us now. Professor Schulhammer, thank you so much for joining us today. Well, thank you so much for having me. I mean, they do say that flattery is the highest form of intimidation, so consider me thoroughly intimidated. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Now, you've written this great piece in Newsweek, and one of the things that you talk about yeah, here is that lie. there is a malaise in the West currently, and you say that ideological goals of the elites are being pursued at the expense of the lower middle class and working classes, and you see truckers in Canada rebelling against this, farmers in the Netherlands, um, you see people rebelling rebelling against the United States in different ways. Um, you see what's happening in Germany, where they've shut off the nuclear plants for whatever reason and now are going to you know, go into a very cold winter in just a few months. Um, they are gratifying the elites, you write, while immiserating the working class. Tell us what is happening here. Tell us why the elites are doing this, but also what is the pushback that's happening? I mean, I think this is a larger trend. You already mentioned, uh, you know, Brexit and the election of Donald Trump, and those were already symptoms of that pushback. But the situation we find ourselves in, I would say it consists of four different groups. Right? One group is the activists. I mean, those are the people who really believe that the end of the world is around the corner, and they're overrepresented in media, in academia, and in the mm -hmm. cultural sphere. Then you have uh, the, the governments and politicians, and what they do is they like to virtue signal to those people because they believe, right? Most of them are on Twitter. They are very active on Twitter. They believe that they represent a huge chunk of the population. And then you have companies who want to make a profit off of it, right? For example, I don't believe that Unilever cares particularly about the environment, but it's something they have to say because they wanted to pander to a specific clientele. So you have a kind of a Bermuda Triangle of ideology that consists of those three groups. And the quote-unquote, when I mean, you know, the working class or the middle class, you could also call them the people who just pay their taxes and want to live their lives, like people who don't spend a lot of time on social media. They're trapped in this because it's more and more encroaching on their daily lives. I mean, you just mentioned it right in Germany. Um, to to uh, leave nuclear energy behind was a purely political ideological position. And the people were told, oh, don't worry, don't worry. We're going to replace it with wind. We're going to replace it with solar. Now it turns out that's not going to work and they will get poorer. And I think this is part of this. They realize now that they accepted the you know eccentric ideas of their elites uh, to the to the extent that they did not believe that it will have a negative effect on their life. But now they see this negative effect, and this is what I tried to put together in my piece. Right, it's school policy in Virginia. It is you know agricultural policy in uh, in the Netherlands. It is you know uh, gas prices in France. It's nuclear energy in Germany. So these things are driven by the same thing that the people say. Wait a moment, we are supposed to be democracies when we can't constantly vote for governments that in the end pursue goals that are interesting to, you know, those 5% of people who are very active, like you're very much in the public eye, but the other 95% are completely ignored. And I think this is the moment now, and I'm very curious how this is going to play out. I mean, the future would be something that you just mentioned, like a social conservative working class party, like a little bit, you guys mentioned this mm. in the previous segment. You see this with Hispanics and working class blacks in the United States. They shift GOP because they say, wait a moment. The, like the progressives, they are in some areas, right? They're insane. This is no longer common sense. They just want to switch to a common sense party. And I think this is exactly what we see at the moment. Really. 
This is the book of 1 Thessalonians, chapter 5, and verse 3. For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. More lies, basically. And that's all a politician is, is basically a liar. They say whatever it is they need to say to get in, into a certain view to the public. And when they get in that office seat, that's a whole nother thing, man. They bought big biz. They working for big business. They're not working for the people, man. They definitely, definitely are not working for the people. They are working for big business. These, the government itself is a corporation. United States is a corporation. You can look this information up, man. But anyway, this is the book of Second Ezra, chapter nine. And uh, verse one, it says, he answered me then and said, measure thou the time diligently, diligently in itself. And when thou seest part of the signs past, which I have told thee before, then shalt thou understand that it is the very same time wherein the highest will begin to visit the world which he made. Therefore, when there shall be seen earthquakes and uproars of the people in the world, then shalt thou well understand that the Most High spake of those things from the days that were before thee, even from the beginning. Now, this ain't the first time we've been hearing about protests worldwide. This ain't the first month. This ain't the first day. This been going on. Like I said, man, I say this all the time. All the men of the Lord have been saying this same exact sentiment. The prophecies are jumping off the pages and they are happening at the same time and it's getting worse and worse and worse. It ain't going nowhere. It's going nowhere. Right? The last protest I heard globally was having to do with, you know, uh, so-called police bro bro uh, police brutality. There ain't no so-called in it. It has something to do with police brutality. Then you had, you know, um, protests pertaining to uh, food shortages and so forth and so on. And here we are now with the price hikes, right? It's an ongoing thing. It's, on, it's only going to get worse and worse and worse. Why is it getting worse and worse and worse? Read this again. In 2 Ezra chapter 9 and verse 1. He answered me then and said, Measure thou the time diligently in itself. When thou seest part of the signs past, which I have told thee before, then shalt thou understand, understand this, this is why, that it is the very same time wherein the highest will begin to visit the world which he made. All right? The prophecies, the prophecies are coming to pass. Ezekiel 38 is coming to pass. Revelation 13 is coming to pass. Second Ezra 9 is coming to pass. Second Ezra 15 is coming to pass. Second Ezra 13 is coming to pass. All of these end time prophecies are coming to pass. Joel 3, they are coming to pass. Matthew 24, they are coming to pass. Just look. Look. Stop. Stop paying attention to, you know, what's going on directly in front of you. Like, get yourself out your neighborhood, man, being real. Get yourself out the job. Get your mindset out there. Pay attention to what's going on around the world. If you are spiritual, and when I say spiritual, I ain't talking about stars and quasars. I'm talking about spiritual according to the word. All right? Romans 7. Real spiritual. And pay attention to what's going on. Because the Most High is visiting this place. And the devil is trying to blind you from really seeing what's going on. He's trying to keep you in a certain mindset. But... That time is over with, right? The Most High waking up his people. His people are prophesying. And we all know what happens when the Most High's people prophesy, right? Or do we? <laughs> let me see. Let me go. Um, let me go to, where is that in Jeremiah? Uh, Salat, one second. One second. So this is Jeremiah 28 and 8. The prophets that have been before me and before thee of old prophesied both against many countries 
and against great kingdoms of war and of evil and of pestilence. So the prophets prophesy about what's going to happen to whatever kingdom they're involved in. And then it happens because the prophet is not prophesying. Thus says the prophet, the prophet is prophesying. Thus says the Lord and the Lord's word is true. So how about Shemiah Rashad put the spirit on the prophet to speak his word? Just know what's being spoken is going to happen. And like I said earlier, man, the prophets have been prophesying about everything that's going on right now. And what the word says is it's going to get worse and worse and worse like a woman in travail, like a woman giving birth until that baby comes. Right, you can't stop that. It's gonna happen. Right, so what you need to be doing is getting your mind right. But as far as the deceivers that are constantly trying to keep your mind in a cloud, this is for them. It's the book of Deuteronomy, chapter thirty-two, and uh, verse twenty-seven says, were it not that I feared the wrath of the enemy, lest their adversaries should behave themselves strangely, and lest they should say, Our hand is high, and Yahweh hath not done all this. Right? They say this is their doing. They believe in their mind. They control their fate. But we all know script says, Man's goings are of the Lord. How can a man then understand his own way? We understand Yahweh controls good and evil right according to the book of isaiah chapter 45 and verse 7 right it says in verse 28 in deuteronomy 32 for they are a nation void of counsel neither is there any understanding in them there is no understanding in them because they are not the people of yahweh yahweh bashim yahweh's people are the only people on this planet they have been given the real understanding. We're the only ones who know what the what what Yahweh wants, but it's based off His word, that's, and that's as far as our understanding goes, right? But it's more than enough in this world, right? Verse twenty nine says, "Oh, that they were wise, that they understood this, that they would consider their latter end." If they could just wrap their head around the prophecies pertaining to them to understand, you will not be successful. So all of that deceiving that you're doing to try to cover up and buy time and, you know, get your, your new world order up and running and have that thing full blast and going to your, your wicked ass utopian society, it will come to naught. Period. And it, and it ain't nothing you can do about that. You can't change none of that. Because it ain't in your hands. It's in the hands of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. Right? So until then, hey, do your thing, man. Do your thing. In fact, go ahead and unleash everything you got planned so that it can be thwarted and you can get out of the way and this prophecy can come to pass. This is the book of Second Ezra. Chapter 6 and verse 9. For Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. All right? That's what we waiting on. The beginning of it that followeth. We waiting on, on the it that followeth. All right? We not in this world. We Of course, we got to operate how we operate. You know, Scripture says, if at all possible, live peaceably with all men. We do that. All right? We don't wear our, our emotions on our sleeves. We maintain wisdom. In our walk, we understand a man don't work, he don't eat. We understand a man don't take care of his his uh, his family is counted less than an infidel. We understand all of that, so we understand that we have to operate in this world, but we are not of this world. We are of the world to come. So with that, Yahweh Shimon these precepts in this video were edifying. Call Haloyim Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai Bahashim Harakakudash Shalawam Yahshallah.